Hello and welcome to another episode of TV on TV. I'm State Representative Tommy Vitolo. You're watching Brookline Interactive Group. Today is Thursday, February 25th. We've got a great show today. We're interviewing Eleanor Parker from Brookline Community Aging Network, Brookline CAN. Uh, but before that, we're going to do the news as we always do. Uh, and and newsflash, I need a haircut, but we're maybe one of these days uh, I'll venture out. Uh, you know, COVID, trying to stay safe, not, not going out of my way to do things I don't need to do. Uh, nationally, the American interior continues to dig out from a terrible snowstorm, ice storm, wind storm. Um, they're in the recovery phase now. The weather has gotten better, but plenty of challenges remain. And uh, no doubt that the federal government will play a part in helping that huge portion of the nation recover. Of course, the Joe Biden administration continues to do what they do. Uh, and, and I'm sure you can find plenty of other sources to get those sort of detailed, up-to-date updates. Here in Massachusetts, uh, the governor, a few days ago, uh, in, in collaboration with the Department of Early and Secondary Education, DESI, has made it clear that they expect kids back in school uh, in March or April. And they've allowed for some exceptions and they are offering some support, uh, but they are not ambiguous about it. They also have not changed the vaccination schedule for teachers and teachers are part of the essential workers who are in the next grouping to be vaccinated. We're currently in phase two, group two, which is uh, adults 65 to 74 or adults with two or more comorbidities. Of course, anyone who was in phase one or phase two, group one, which is aged 75 and up, can also be vaccinated. This is a pretty big group though, and so it will take uh, four, six weeks, maybe until we get into phase two, group three, which is also a very big group. It's not clear the timing on vaccination for teachers. We've got, um, a Boston mayor's race, the only news relevant, I think, this week. Two things. Uh, another candidate got in, State Representative John Santiago. Also, the House has voted to not require Boston to have a, a early election, of course, with um, Mayor Walsh heading to Washington. Boston needs a mayor between now-ish and their November uh, general election. Normally, they would have to have a special election which is of course a special runoff and then a special general and then a runoff and a general in September, November. So rather than do that, Kim Janey will be acting mayor all the way through November and then the new mayor uh, will be elected if the Senate and the governor agree with the House's suggestion of let's not uh, have that election. That idea was actually initially floated by city councilor Arroyo, Arroyo, excuse me, um, and filed as a home rule petition. Here in Brookline, the school committee continues to work with the Brookline Educators Union on a plan to bring back, bring back grades one through five uh, by the end of March. Uh, also, I just, a couple of other fun notes or interesting notes. Um, Frank Caro, recently deceased, has been posthumously awarded a golden shoe by Walk Boston uh, for all of his great work on pedestrian advocacy. The spring elections continue to creep upon us. Uh, Mid-March is the deadline to get on the ballot. Of course, the election is Tuesday, May 4. There appears to be a very competitive race for select board, uh, as well as for moderator. We'll see if school committee, uh, library trustee, uh, housing authority heat up as well. That's really the news. There's not a lot going on. The weather's gotten better. People are feeling good, uh, getting outside. And uh, that's the story. So we're going to go uh, right over now to a pre-recorded interview that I shot last night with Eleanor Parker, who is a member of the Brookline Community Aging Network. We're going to talk about what the BCAN or the Brookline can uh, does and who they serve and how it works. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching big.
And as promised, today's guest is Eleanor Parker from the Brookline Community Aging Network, sometimes shortened to be Brookline CAN. And Eleanor and I are going to talk about the Brookline Community Aging Network and really what its role is in Brookline. Eleanor, so glad you could join us today. How are you feeling? Now well, we got to get you to unmute yourself. We're on Zoom, of course. Uh, this is the COVID lifestyle, and we're always still getting a little better at it. So Eleanor, there we go. I'm feeling fine. Thank you very much. And looking forward to this. You're looking well. I'm glad you're feeling well. Tell us, tell us about Brookline Community Aging Network. What is it? What is its mission? What is Brookline CAN all about? Okay, well, Brookline CAN, it's a Brookline Community Aging Network, as you said. Um, it's a, a member-driven volunteer organization, nonprofit. It's primarily for older Brookline residents. Um, that promotes services and activities to enable independent living and improve quality of life. That's the short version. And uh, we also obviously want to ensure that older Brookline residents remain a vital part of the Brookline community. <clears throat> and so, um, but it's not the senior center. Right? No, it's not the senior center. That's a very good question. However, we do work with the senior center and we, on on COVID times, I have our meetings at the Senior Center. And Ruth Ann Dobick, uh, Executive Director of the Senior Center, is also works with us. She's, I guess, I guess she would be our Executive Director also. So we have a very close connection to the Senior Center, but we also operate, uh, uh, you know, independently from it. And do you work with other organizations uh, in town or businesses? Uh, we work with a lot of them. I'm not sure that I can kind of give you, a, you know, names right now. Um, we uh, basically uh, work on a lot of projects with the various members of our com communities, that, not communities, but our, our uh, uh, groups that we have that, you know, that are part of our committees. Um, so they're all assigned to different things. So we, we, we try very hard to cover you know, all of Brookline um, and uh, also, you know, cover it with with our work and make sure that they know what we're doing. So that, again, we, we do have uh, relationships with a lot of the different organizations in the town. And, and maybe you could tell our viewers a little bit about, you know, the roots of Brookline Can. What's the, the history of the organization? Well, it goes back to about, I guess, 2007, and it was a collaborative effort between the uh, Council on Aging and uh, Jewish Family and Children's Services. Um, and they decided that they really would be a good idea to look around and see what kinds of services might be available outside of the actual senior center um, that older people can, can be involved with. Um, and then they decided, originally they were gonna be independent. And there were a lot of organizations like this throughout the state that are independent, that are these independent um, senior organizations. Um, we decided, or they decided, I wasn't part of it at that point, that we would work with the senior center because they already had so many of the services that we wanted to be able to provide to our members and to other people, uh, but also to be there for people who may not really wanna be part of the senior center, but still wanted to be involved um, with, the, with the town. And uh, our goal? Uh, well, the goals are really to learn from uh, experts about how communities have approached aging at home, um, solicit input from Brookline residents, uh, and ask for active involvement from uh, the citizens and residents so, of Brookline. So basically, that's what we have been doing really over the, over, over the years. I, I've been with Brookline CAN pretty much since the beginning. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I can say from experience exactly what we're, we're doing and how successful we've been, we have been. And so the, if I recall correctly, the beginning was right around 2011. Um, and, 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 you know, you mentioned, I think it's important to say that, you know, you're asking for the active involvement of residents, but that's not limited to older adults, right? In fact, well, I'm a right. member of the Brookline Community Aging Network. I'm a oh, yeah. paying member, right? Well, it, basically, Tommy, it's for anybody else who agrees with what we're trying to do. Um, and we absolutely positively reach out to people of all ages. 
Um, the, the bulk of the people, obviously, because it's called Brookline Community Aging Network, uh, generally are older people, although there's certainly no age limit on either end as to who should join. That's great. That's great. And so um, we talked about about sort of some values and, and a little bit of history. Uh, what are the services, you know, we can talk about pre-COVID and, and hopefully post-COVID, as well as during COVID. What kind of services uh, are you providing for members well, and, and we're, for we're others? Pretty, yeah, we're, we're a pretty active organization um, by committees. I mean, we have basically a bunch of committees um, with the this steering committee on top that basically determines the direction that the organization should go. Um, I'm on the communications committee um, and the communications committee does offer a lot, it really help to have a lot of services. For instance, um, we have a monthly newsletter, which we write um, and uh, Ruth Ann looks at it, but I don't think that she's ever, and makes suggestions, but essentially it is a member written uh, and, and uh, devised and distributed newsletter that we do every month. As a matter of fact, the March um, newsletter, the March monthly newsletter is either just gone out or just about to go out, even though it's February. So we, we try to keep deadlines. So that, that's a good thing. And that obviously has lots of information that seniors and others would be interested in about what's going on around Brookline. It's a, it's a you know, one page sheet on both sides. It talks about all you know, committees that are going on, the activities that are going on, things that people uh, would, might be interested in. And even things that people, not, not necessarily seniors would certainly be interested in. Um, we also have uh, the website, which is brooklinecan.org, um, and that's operated by a very talented fellow named John Say. You, you might you might know John, um, and he keeps that he keeps that website alive. I, I've looked on it, you know, through my experience and other things that I'm doing. I've looked at the websites of other kinds of organizations and can tell immediately that the information on it is pretty old. Our website isn't that at all. It's updated continually. Uh, John gets information, it gets posted right away. And as soon as he gets information, that, that's it. And as long as he keeps getting information and he goes out and looks for it too, that information goes onto the, onto the website. So pretty active. And that is brooklinecan.org. Um, then we obviously have a, a steering committee who determines what we're going to be doing and where we're going to do it and who's going to be in charge of all of those things. That's a, uh, it, it, you know, it's a standing committee, establishes policies and procedures of Brookline CAN. Um, it, it's made up of all of the heads of each of the committees at Brookline CAN, plus uh, Ruth Ann Dobek is, is on the steering committee and um, the members of a, so, uh, the organizations that we work with within the town. So the um, other organizations, and I'm probably not going to remember all their names, and I should, obviously, um, is the, um, sure, okay, we'll get onto that later with all the names of the organizations. We'll get there. You know, yeah. it's, it's funny. No, I, you're talking about the website. Time, but like, I, I never even think of their names, so. That's all right. Okay. You're talking about the website, I'm thinking like, you know, maybe the Brookline Can website tagline is, you know, the members are older, but the content is fresh. Yes, that's very good. That's Something very like that, good. Right? That's very good. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm intrigued by the, I, 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 of course, get the newsletter. I didn't realize that, um, uh, I hadn't really noticed, I, maybe I should have, that um, it's always on the early side of things rather than, you know, people receiving their holiday cards in February, kind of, you know, which so many folks get stuck in. And, and who knows, maybe people who receive that newsletter, you know, next week are going to see the link to this interview and are only watching this interview because it was in the newsletter. Hint, hint. Um, well, I, unfortunately, it's not going to be any, anywhere until the April. Uh, oh, no. What in April would be all set because we operate quickly, and uh, I, I know for a fact that the March newsletter is already at the printer. Uh, wow! Yes, that's yes. great. Yes. We work. We the way with the newsletter goes. Carol, Caro, and and Ruth Seidman are the two people in charge of the newsletter, uh, and they are on us all month to to give them the stories that we might be working on, the stories that we're thinking about. And then the entire communications committee, and there's five or six of us, um, come up with any ideas. And we have to, Carol, you know, she hits that whip and says, you've got to get the invitation, you've got to get all the information in by Friday, whatever that Friday might be. 
and we do, she works on it, Ruth works on it. They, we look at it, we make sure we edit it as a committee, um, goes back to her, she gets it over to the printer and it goes out and gets distributed. And it's a great newsletter and really one of the many benefits to being a member. Um, I wanna pivot a little bit. Uh, many of the interviews I've been doing lately are with organizations who are actively advocating for change in the community, um, political change. And that, for me, of course, politics is not a dirty word, right? Politics is, is how we, we make decisions and, and how we govern, and that includes um, issues that impact seniors. So can you tell us, does Brookline Community Aging Network advocate for change within the town? And if so, what are some of the areas in which uh, you're focusing these days? Well, one of our committees, as you probably know, is the livable, I never can remember the name of that committee, the livable something experience committee. Um, and that one absolutely does advocate for change, not necessarily big political changes, but, uh, you know, lots of changes within within the, um, the community. Um, for instance, uh, one of the activities that we're just working on right now was um, pedestrian, pedestrians rights of way. And the town itself has picked up on that. And they just put out within the past week, uh, uh, this flyer on, you know, pedestrian safety. Uh, and that came through the town. But one of the reasons it came out is because that was something that we were advocating for. Uh, and and yeah, again, the, the, the flyer is now on the town website and we've all also, I think it may also be on our website right now. Uh, so we do advocate for, for various things um, and, and watch to see that they, they you know, they, 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 they get done, they get accomplished. And that came through the Livable Community Advocacy Committee? Yes. Yeah, thank you for coming up with that name that I never can quite get. I, I looked it up on the website on, on my other computer while we were talking. I, yeah, I, I admit it. But I, um, if I did that, I wouldn't be able to look at you. <laughs> so, so I want to talk. Look, we can't we can't have a conversation about current events and about an organization um, that doesn't acknowledge that COVID has dramatically changed for the time being how we operate, how we operate every day, how we communicate, how we organize, and I have no doubt that COVID has impact the Brookline Community Aging Network and its members. After all, older adults are far and away the most susceptible to severe harm from COVID. And older adults have had to be incredibly careful for a year now um, at, at severe consequence. Um, and so I'd like to hear a little bit about um, how Brookline can has maybe tried to help meet some needs, uh, help help serve, how, how does it how does it organize and operate? Look, you know, I, I'm not surprised you were able to connect on Zoom right away. You know, we used to have this idea that a lot of older adults um, weren't as facile with technology, but, you know, in some ways COVID has helped make sure that more older adults are more comfortable mm -hmm. with technology as a way to communicate. So tell us about Brookline CAN and COVID. Right, L let me just, interrupt with one of the things that you just said. Um, as an older adult, I sometimes get a little upset at people assuming that we were always older adults and couldn't do anything. I mean, computers have been around for quite a while. I know this isn't the question you asked, but it's, it's one of the things that I get a little upset about. Computers have been around, you know, and very active since what, the 1970s, the 1980s. Um, I think I had my first computer sometime in the 1980s. Uh, and, you know, have had one since. I operated a business that actually was on computers at the time uh, and have kind of grown with them. Although at one point I decided I didn't need to grow anymore with them because I could do, <laughs> they could already do anything that I, that I needed. So an awful lot of the people out there, are, you know, already are working with computers. Um, that hasn't really even been an issue. And if they don't have a computer, they, for the most part, they have a smartphone. So yeah, it is something that we're aware of and that we work with so that we, one of the reasons we have a printed newsletter is because of that, the information is on the, the printed newsletter. Um, but we have our meetings, what we've done now during the COVID time is basically have our meetings online, just like you did. We have, um, we have steering committee meetings that meet once a month online um, through, through Zoom, just as we are, uh, are doing. So. We do the best we can. Obviously, we have not had an in-person meeting 
since what would it have been last February, I guess. So that's already a year. Uh, I, I think March was the month that we basically just stopped having meetings in, in person. But we've, we've done that. The newsletter, as I said, is um, a, pr a print newsletter. So it does get out and gets distributed to all the meetings. It goes out to nearly a thousand people. We don't have a thousand members. So it goes out to all of the town uh, administrators and people we hope, I hope that you get the newsletter. <laughs> you, should, you should be on a mailing list. I'm, I'm a member, of course. Yes, well, you'd members. get it anyway. You're a member. Okay, all right, I get that. Now I'm hearing I don't have to renew my membership and I'll still get the newsletter. Yeah, you probably would still get the <laughs> newsletter unless we somehow or other, you know, your name escaped us. Uh, which I think is hard to do because you're visible. Um, you know, so that's certainly one way. And then uh, obviously there's the, the you know, the, the website itself uh, has lots and lots of information. And, and John is very, very good at, at keeping that uh, uh, current at all times. So there's information, you know, on the, on the newsletter. Um, and basically we, we do the best we can we try to have meetings as many as we had before. We used to have monthly meetings. We still have monthly meetings. Um, and certainly our steering committee meetings, I don't think we've missed anybody. I think all the people on the steering committee um, who've been coming regularly have been coming still. Uh, somehow or other, they either have computers or they, they're able to go on without being on a computer. I'm not too sure exactly what the technology for that is, but there's a lot of people that will be, not a lot, but there's, there's people on the steering committee whose voices we hear, but we don't see them. So- Right, and in fact, in fact, for Zoom and other technologies, one can dial in by telephone, which exactly. I will do sometimes yeah. if, yeah. you know, I'm walking to pick up my daughter from school, but I gotta be on a Zoom call at the same time, I, you know, I'll just dial in with a phone. And so, sure. so there's lots of flexibility. Um, it, yeah. Brookline can does so many things, it's impossible for one person to know the details on all of them. Uh, even, even you, Eleanor. Do you, do you know much about the age-friendly business initiatives? Yes. I know, yeah, that, I know that is something. Ken has been working on it, and I, I'd love to hear more about it, and I don't know if you're the right person to ask or not. Well, there's actually, uh, one of the things that we have that I don't even think I mentioned in the information that we talked about before was the, um, the TV show that we have, which is called uh, Age-Friendly Television. AFT. Um, and that's aired and, right here on Brookline Interactive Group. That, that's exactly right. It's on Brookline Interactive. Uh, Matt Weiss is the, um, the what, the, the host of it. Uh, and he, and uh, John, I know, is, John Say is also a producer. Matt is on the steering committee with us. Um, and, uh, you know, that is definitely a way that we get the, the information out. Um, and it's got a pretty good listening. I mean, uh, Certainly, the um, the people at Brookline, uh, the big Brookline Interactive, if I get group, there we go. It's big. Um, they certainly seem to be very pleased with it because you know we keep on going and they keep asking Matt to do more programs. Um, but that is a way that we we communicate, and that is a, a, a something that I think the the radio station is called AF AFC or AFT. Age-friendly television, AFT, is the, is the name of the program, uh, and um, that is another way that we out there, we you know, we are out there communicating. And um, Matt interviews lots of people who are involved with the town, and talks with them the way we're talking about uh, what's what's happening in the town and what's happening in the town that seniors might be involved with, uh, or might be of interest to. So, and I know it's a it's a widely watched show. I mean, I've I've been climbing up the ranking of Brookline Interactive Group ratings, but it doesn't look like I'm going to pass him anytime soon. Um, you know, maybe maybe with you on, right? I can steal some of his audience. Well, you, you will definitely be unfortunately not in the March newsletter because we missed the deadline. But you will definitely be in the April newsletter. I love it. I love it. So so, we will promote that, and it'll also be on the website because although I I, I just mentioned this to John. Uh, yesterday, I guess, because I already talked to you like two days ago, but uh, we'll definitely have something of, of this on it. And if we have a link, you know, to the TV show, we can put that on the website also. We, we will. And that's that's help. That's thanks to our friends uh, over at Big. You know, I know that, um, look, all organizations uh, rely on members and rely on their contributions, both both their volunteer time and their their treasure. 
right. to be effective. And I'm, I'm sure that Brookline Can is no different. Um, as I said, I, I get the three-year membership every three years. I get an email, I think, from, from Carol Caro. Right. And I just send it right back, you know, send, send in the money um, because I, I want to be a member and I, and I want to be part of this group. How can folks who, who um, are interested become members? Well, the easiest way really is just go onto the website, which is booklinecan.org. Um, that is the website, www. I don't even don't think you need the www anymore. It's booklinecan.org. Uh, and I think on the front page of the website, there is a box that says, want to be a member, click here. Uh, and the information is is right there. The, 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 it has a way to, to um, basically pay for it immediately. Um, and, and go on. That, that's really the easiest way. And then obviously, um, I, th I think that, that Ruth Ann right now is kind of heading our membership committee. So I suppose you could also call the senior center to find out how to join. But certainly if you have a computer, the easiest way is really just to go onto the website. Well, and I hope, I hope folks who are interested will do that. I have no doubt that in the last year, a lot of organizations have struggled to sort of retain membership and, yes. and, and hold on to interest, um, both because they can't offer exactly the same services and because of the uncertainty that we're all facing. And so this is really a nice time, you know, spring is in the air. Um, it's a nice time to renew. It's a nice time to, to join and, and demonstrate um, and demonstrate some support. So Eleanor, listen, I really appreciate you taking the time I know you've got a lot going on and I'm grateful that you were able to take a few minutes uh, and spend it with us here on Brookline Interactive Group. And, uh, you know, I look forward to seeing you in person. Um, I'm sure you, if you haven't been vaccinated, you will be soon. I'll be vaccinated someday. And uh, we're my, my age level, I've already had one vaccination shot and I get the next one. Good for you. And you've got the second one scheduled? Excuse me? You've second one scheduled. scheduled. Yes, yeah, so I've I've been a, I went to Fenway Park. It actually was a very, it, it's a funny thing to say, but it, that turned out to be a very pleasant experience. They give you a lollipop or anything? No, I didn't get a lollipop, but they were just because my kids sponsors. get lollipops when they get vaccines. Yeah, and I didn't. They didn't get a lollipop, That's but it was bad. still. It was. It was just a. It, it was a very friendly place to be, as Fenway Park is anyway. Um, and I got a kick out of it. They had a gateway there. After you have the shot and you start to go out, there's a. Uh, the entrance way to the park and it says you know this way to the park go out and get your picture taken <laughs> which I thought was really kind of fun that's great I'm glad I look so many folks have had trouble getting their appointment um, the rollout was not very good but I, the experiences that I'm hearing is that you know, that's the terrible spot but then once you get your appointment um, you go in you get it done and you book your second appointment while you're there at your Absolutely. first appointment yes. so that's locked in right um, and then, and then things are, are looking good. And of course, you're still wearing your mask when you're in public and, and still being careful, but uh, risk is dramatically reduced. I'm delighted to hear that. Eleanor, thanks so much for coming on the show. Uh, we had a great show this week. We always do. Uh, okay. And that's because we have great guests. So uh, you've been watching Brookline Interactive Group. I'm Tommy Vitolo. Uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks so much okay, for joining. Thanks a lot, Tommy. Appreciate it.